Vargas and Jesse Benavides. He did it again against Derek Gaynor, the rising prospect from the Roy Jones stable. He was in terrible trouble and then just put Gaynor's lights out in the eighth round. Hard to fathom sometimes. Hard to pigeonhole style-wise. Sometimes slick and quick, stylish. Other times, just occasionally, he does produce a deadly punch from somewhere. Well, he kept stressing that in the pre-fight build-up that he'd had more knockouts than Hamed had had fights. Because he's got 32 knockouts, Hamed 28 fights. So he shows that he is a good puncher. He is very experienced. And he has seen a lot of different styles of different sorts of fighters. So he ha he's bringing that into the ring with him. Like Naz, he's a great self-publicist. He gives out lollipops and toffees and biscuits to his fans. Is he nervous? Doesn't really look like it, does it? I think this shakes up to be, away from home, the biggest test yet for Prince Nassim against the man who comes from the Flushing area of New York and calls himself the Flushing Flash. He's from the area where they have Flushing Meadow, the US Open tennis. He says that Naz is a media creation, an entertainer first and a fighter second. He says, I'm a fighter first and an entertainer second. I'm in this business as a blue collar champion. I do it to pay the bills, to feed my wife and four children. But is he a year or so past his best? Has he faded a little too much? Now we await the entry of Prince Nassim Hamed and they rarely if ever seen anything like this in the United States. We're used to it back home now. What are they going to make of this? Well, when they see this, there's a huge cheer from the American fans here and, of course, from the Brits, because I think they like a showman. They certainly do, and they get one with Nazim Hamed. Puts on a great show, and I think this is what people have wanted to see. This, it's been a curiosity out here. What has he got? What, what is he going to bring differently? And I think he's going to show it now. One of the newspapers here had a nice line this week. Called him the artist previously unknown as Prince. <laughs> They've had to make special arrangements at Madison Square Garden with ramps and the rest to accommodate a ring walk that, by order of the American television executives, has been cut from 20, would you believe, to 10 minutes. But meanwhile, while that's going on, Kelly, I've never seen it happened before but Kelly and his trainer are doing some working out on the pads in the ring so they're still very focused concentrating on what they've got to do looking at their game plan and actually working on it in the ring as this is going on but all this is happening remember in a place where they seen so many great fighters down the years there's Kelly who was just filling in the time they've obviously thought about this him and his trainer Phil Borgia what are we going to do for 10 minutes waiting around some of them of course wear headphones and cover their faces up hide themselves away but Kelly's going to stay busy and warm well, it's a long, an entrance like this is a very long time to sit covered up or sit with headphones on. So I think they're doing the right thing, they're keeping warm, keeping focused, not allowing the antics of Hamed and the entrance to go against them. And they've got to keep their mind on what they're doing and just blot all of this out. And they're doing it, they're, they, there they go, in the ring, on the pads, working, coaching, trying to keep the concentration going. Well, he's certainly milking this for all it's worth. One or two 
American fans that I was speaking to earlier on said that uh, there'll be a lot of Americans coming here tonight hoping to see Prince Nassim dumped on the seat of his pants and sent back with his tail between his legs to the other side of the Atlantic. I wonder what he's making of that. <laughs> he would never try anything like this, would he, Holy? We'll God. be amazed if in his next fight he comes out and do a similar thing, won't we? He's certainly looking with interest, but it's not, it's not what Evander Holyfield's about. I think also, Ian, from a, another aspect, we've got to look at the danger of Naz thinking too much about what he's you know, putting a performance on for the Americans. Because he's certainly, this is, he's milking this, this is longer than a normal ring walk. He's taken an awful long time. He's got to remember it's not, a, not about dancing. He's got to try under this to keep himself focused. Kelly is now getting very cross about this. He's up on the ring apron and getting pretty wound up and saying, OK, I've got the idea, now let's get on with this. I think he's saying this is getting a bit ridiculous. Well, I think it's fair enough to do that. This is a fight, there is rules, and I think there should really be a time limit on an entrance. I don't think this should go on that long. And at last, he makes his entrance. Well, it looks like something out of Hollywood, doesn't it? Never mind New York. It's the all-disco dancing entrance with somersaults still to come. But the bottom line, really, that these American fans will want to know is, can he really fight when he's pitched in at a decent level, as he is tonight? Well, it's the big, big build-up he's given himself. Now he's got to back it up. And, of course, it's worth remembering that every time so far he has backed it up. 28 wins, 26 by knockout, 18 inside three rounds, the last 16 by stoppage. The Prince comes to the gun. A lot of the famous names of American boxing are here watching all this, among them Pernell, Sweet P, Whitaker. <laughs> Slightly bemused look on the faces of a lot of, uh, a lot of the fans here. Because they've never seen anything like this before. He is unique, and it is something very, very different. And here comes the somersault. They've seen acrobatics before from the likes of Camacho and uh, Jorge Paez over here. Prince Nassim lands in the United States. When he landed, who was there to meet him? Kevin Kelly. And they've been talking all week. I think they actually get on reasonably well together. They've been selling the tickets well and looking around. It's a good crowd at Madison Square Garden. They've done a very, very good job at selling this promotion over here. They've made it into a big event. One and three quarter million dollars spent on launching Nassim in America, where they think he can become one of the really top draws tonight is aimed to be the start of that process but could it all go wrong
gentlemen, this is for Frank Warren for Sports Network in association with Cedric Kushner Promotion presents 12 rounds of boxing for the WBO Featherweight Championship of the World. Sponsored by Adidas, with special thanks to the Ministry of Sound in London, official suppliers of this evening's music, taken from their dance album, The Annual Three. This bout is sanctioned by the World Boxing Organization, President and Supervisor at Ringside, Francisco Barcacel. It is also sanctioned by the New York State Athletic Commission, Chairman, former Olympic gold medalist and two-time world heavyweight champion, Floyd Patterson. Commissioners in attendance at ringside, Rose Trentman and Melville Southard. First Executive Director, Tony Russo. Executive Director, Jim Bosanello. Director of Boxing, Bob Duffy. Our physicians at ringside, Dr. Arnold Illman and Dr. Rufus Sadler. Timekeeper at the bell is Jim Borzell. The three judges scoring this bout on a 10-point must system will be Jose Rivera, Victor Salomon, and Eva Shane. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action, your referee, Benji Esteve. And now, for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, ladies and gentlemen, from Madison Square Garden, New York City. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing green trimmed with gold, and weighing 126 pounds. His professional record, an outstanding one. 47 victories. 32 by knockout with only one defeat and two draws. And he has captured two world titles. Ladies and gentlemen, from Flushing, New York, here is the WBO number three ranked featherweight in the world and former two-time world champion, the Flushing Flush, Kevin. And his opponent, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing leopard with Adidas trim, he weighs 126 pounds also. And he also has an outstanding professional record of 28 consecutive And he also has world title belt. Tonight, he comes to America to show the world he must be considered as pound for pound and not the best in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, from Sheffield, So we're all set to go here at Madison Square Garden, which has staged some of the great featherweight fights in history. Tony Canzanieri punching out Kid Chocolate. Two of the three Willie Pep Sandy Sadler battles. Salvador Sanchez beating Azuma Nelson, who was then an unknown in the 15th and last round. Okay, man. Tough acts to follow. Remember, protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. May the best man win. Touch up. Let's go. Come on, guys. Touch it up. All right, let's do this. They reluctantly touch gloves for referee Benji Estevez from New Jersey. Well, this is where all the hoopla has to stop and Prince Nassim Hamed has to show the Americans what all the fuss is about. Watch for Kelly, maybe, maybe, to try to start fast and put the pressure on straight away. Prince Nassim Hamid has been saying, I might even do this in round one, though his prediction is round three. 
Kelly, as you can see, southpaw, can be tricky, lots of ring craft, but can be hit and hurt as well. Hamed, who boxed beautifully in his last appearance against Jose Badillo, broke him up inside seven rounds. Usually he's quite a slow starter, Naz. Takes a look for a while. Kelly will know all about Nassim's power. And will be careful that as he tries to land these southpaw jabs and dictate the pace, that he would be open possibly for a counter from a very heavy hitter. And in his last fight against Badillo, Hamed showed a very good southpaw jab, and I think he's got to try and get that into play. That could be difficult because he's quite widely outreached by Kevin Kelly, but he's got to get that southpaw jab working. There's always a smile playing around the lips of Hamed, who's only been on the floor once in his career against Daniel Alicia. Good left hand from Naz there. Hamed looking as if he relishes the occasion. Bound to have been a few butterflies, I think, no matter what he might say. This certainly got to be, he's a good left hand. Oh, right hand from Kelly on the counter, and Hamed is down for the second time. This is trouble. He doesn't look seriously hurt, but that has got the crowd on fire here. And most of them, of course, are pro Kelly. Well, Hamid left in with a big left. That looked a good shot, but it was the quick counter from Kelly which did the damage. This is a clever fighter, this Kevin Kelly. And he's got him again with the left hand. Make no mistake. I went to the Kelly camp, very professional. They'd done their homework. They'd watched videos of Hammett over and over again to work out their strategy. Naz is not badly shaken up, though. Well, it'll be a 10-8 round, that would, I think, for Kelly on the scorecards. It was not what the Prince had in mind on his American debut. And that will have been a big shock for Hamed. It came out of nothing. He just left in as normal with his hands down. Now take a look at this again. Yeah, he left his chin out to dry, didn't he? He left it up in the air, hands down by his side. That's what he's got to be careful of. But in the past, fighters haven't been quick enough to capitalize on the slack defense of Hamed, but he came back very well with a quick shot, Kelly. He was lucky in a way that uh, Hamed was leaning away from the punch. He kind of rode it and was caught more off balance maybe than anything. If he'd been walking into that, who knows? It might have been over. Here's round two. What happens next here? We thought it would be dangerous to underestimate Kelly, and we've been proved right. But the last time he was on the floor against Alicia, Hamid came back to win in the second round. Kelly's jab, he's got it working, and he's stepping in, taking the centre of the ring, and at the moment, you'd have to say, dictating affairs. There it is again! Well, that sharp jab of Kelly has really got the, the crowd shouting at him. Kelly's got the centre of the ring behind the jab, dominating at this stage. And switching has another look back. Three. He's got no way. And he touched Four. down again. Five. He touched Four. down again. And that will be another knockdown counted against Prince Nassim Hamid. He's getting caught off balance. He looks all over the place. He looks wide open. Hamid. And he gets into the right Four. counter. as a knockdown, very confusing on the far side from us. We'll take a look again at that. 
just to confirm, that was not scored as a knockdown for Hammett. Well, these fast punches from Kelly are finding massive holes and a big right hand from Kelly there. The chin is up, the hands are down, and Hammett has to change here because he's been caught by a lot of punches from Kevin Kelly. Well, he's picking holes in Nassim Hammett here. And you'd have to say at this moment... Oh, look at that, though! Look at that, though! Right hand from Hammett! He's always got the power! Oh. And suddenly, it's different again. There's always the hope for such a big puncher as Hammett that he'll be able to deliver a knockout blow to get himself out of trouble. But again, Hamed, if he comes for the knockout, he has to be careful he doesn't leave his chin in the air because Kelly's still got his wits about him. This low-slung guard that Hamed has bases his defence on reflex. Kelly's stepping in, getting in range, and at the moment can hardly miss with a jab. And with some follow-up shots as well. Kelly is so sharp and so accurate. Normally the, the reflexes are very good from Hamed. He can get out of the way, make the, the opponent miss, but he's struggling here to make Kelly miss. Kelly took a glance away from Hamed to somebody at ringside for a moment there. Last few seconds of the second round. Both of them have been, have been on the floor already. Well, it's extraordinary what has happened here in this fight already. And, well, in the past, we have wondered about Hamed's defence, this lunging. And Kelly has got the technical answers, hasn't he? He really has the fast hands, finding massive gaps in the defence. Well, the defence from Hamed is always just reflexes. And it just, it's not working tonight. Look at that. Have you ever seen him get hit like that before? The chin up, but they're just a short little right hand. He came back with that well. He wasn't seriously hurt, Kelly. Give him a little look, almost just to say, well done, you got me there. What an unbelievable round this is. And then he took another one for good measure there as Kelly went down in the corner. That was not counted as a knockdown. Here's the third round. Again, the southpaw jab from Kelly, the native New Yorker. And his fans here are really believing that they can rip up the free fight script. And they've obviously came here with a, a very good game plan, the Kelly crew. And they're shouting in the corner, use the reach. Oh, he got him with the left hand, he did a bit of a silly dance with the legs there, Hamed. Here, Hamed is fighting a man who really believes that he has the tools to beat Hamed. He's going in with real self-belief. That jab is such a good weapon from Kelly, so very, very sharp. It isn't slipping it at all. Well, can he find some answers here? This is a man who has said he just cannot be beaten, that he'll be a legend. And again, a big left hand from Kelly. Hamed just cannot get out of the way of these punches. It's an unpalatable truth, but at the moment, Hamed is being outboxed. No question about it. This jab is just knocking his head back. And the entire American enterprise could be grounded unless maybe Prince Nassim can just detonate one of his really big punches to turn the whole thing on its head.
Well, we never thought we'd see this, I don't think, did we, Glenn? I don't think so. I think we knew that Kelly had very good capabilities and he had to box an intelligent fight. And he's shown that he's obviously went to school, locked himself away. He's studied how he's got to beat Hamid. And at the moment, he's going through with his game plan very well indeed. Whatever they worked on, and you can see it here, is working. Although there's a right hand from Hamid. And a very good little short left hand too from Hamid. That was better. Now he's starting to get through. Can he work his way back? Kelly again glancing at somebody off stage and not in his corner either. Five seconds. Last few seconds of round three and that was a Kelly round again. That was the round that Nassim predicted he would win the fight. We're past that. You don't move your head. We're going to run into difficulties, and I don't want that. What we worked on to get this guy out of here was us, our tempo. Correct? When you're hunting a peanut, think what you did to Craig. Think what you did to And watching at ringside, Ryan Rhodes, who lost in his world title attempt last week against Otis Grant in Sheffield, and he must be worried. The aura of invincibility that surrounded the camp is suddenly get in a wall looking and punctured. Pick him off, you will gradually break him up off your job. Yeah. You know, bing, bing. Bang, and then come back. Don't him. Break him up on him. He's had his phone now. He's had his phone. You start giving The words of Brandon Ingle, whose brother, by the way, a leading Irish amateur, fought in this arena about 60 years ago. Here's round four. The third again was a, a Kelly round. With Hamid coming back into it just towards the end, but not quite doing enough to win the round. Hamid has to start bringing his own jab into play. But Kelly has a five-inch reach advantage, and part of their plan was to use that. And now he's slipping a few more punches. I think if Kelly starts coming closer to Hamid, that will suit Hamid more. Kelly's boxed so well from long range, using his, his reach and his speed. He doesn't want to get lulled into a fight, but the fight will suit Hamid. Just wonder whether Nassim has frozen a little early on on his American debut as well. Think that's part of it it could well be a, a point he just he's not getting his boxer together he doesn't seem to have his his speed his reflexes are very poor but i think we've got to say at this point it's a very good performance from kevin kelly he's doing everything right and they're just starting to pick up the tempo and he's got him there oh, and that could turn this all around yet that was a heavier shot Kelly says he's all right, but he's down for the second time, and maybe this is the breakthrough after some very anxious, not to say embarrassing moments for Hamid early on. But Kelly had to keep it long range, as I said. He's getting involved in a fight. He's closing down, getting close to Hamid, and this is where Hamid can get him with punches. Another count. He touched down again. Touched down with a glove. It was a right hand, and Hamid has to take... Another count. He's not badly hurt, but he keeps touching down because he's off balance with the gloves. Big right, Hamid. And another left hand hook. That might not be the end of it. No. Kelly bounces up. The count is at six. He's down for the second time in the round. Is he going to make it? No, he doesn't. He's knocked out. It is over. And Prince Nassim Hamid. Well, the American dream does take off for him after it looked so dodgy for so long. What but an amazing fight that was. An amazing fight, but he prevailed with the, the extra power. Kelly decided to get in the fight, took the fight to him. As soon as he did that, Hamed, with his extra power, it then became his sort of fight, and he could take over. And the, the power was the key for Hamid. But from long range, Kelly was doing everything right. And I just do not know why he changed tactics and decided that now was the time to step in and take the fight to Hamid. Let me give you a minute. I've ever boxed. Let him serve. And I'm the best 
Well, I tell you what, everybody connected with the American CB company, Sprat Warren, everybody must be breathing a huge, huge sigh of relief. And there was a, a little question about whether Kelly had got up before it got quite to 10. I think it, he probably just didn't quite make it. The referee was right on top of it. But there were some anxious moments there. Very, very anxious. I don't think he'd want to be in a fight like that again, Hamid. And I think he's got to look at his defence a little. Tremendous that he could pull it out and win when it was all going so badly. When he'd been on the floor, when he'd been hurt, but yet he could still pull it out. But he's just got to, he's got to look at that fight long and hard at the mistakes he, he, he made. And there were many.